Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to introduce centripetal forces. Centripetal forces are going to exist when we're moving in a circle, and what we're going to see is that the process for solving those problems are very similar to solving other force problems that we did in the past. You draw a free body diagram, you write F equals MA, and so on and so forth. There's only a few things that are a little bit different about circular motion and centripetal forces. Let's check it out. So in linear motion, when you're moving in the x-axis, the y-axis, or even at an angle like this, um, as long as it's a straight line, right, we had forces in the x and y axis. Now we're going to have forces in the centripetal axis. And the idea is that the x or y axis can be thought of as a centripetal axis if rotation is happening in that direction. Let me show you real quick. Let's say I'm spinning a rock at the end of a string horizontally like this. So I'm spinning a rock like this, right? So if it's here at this edge, then it's pointing this, it's accelerating towards the center, right? It's always accelerating towards the center. And here, the x-axis is also the centripetal axis, okay? Um, if I'm spinning it vertically, so that at the bottom it's accelerating up, and at the top it's accelerating down, remember the acceleration is centripetal, so it's towards the middle. Um, here, the y-axis becomes the centripetal axis, <clears throat> okay? And we're going to say that the centripetal axis takes precedence over the x and y axis. We'll see what that means a little later. So before we had sum of all force equals ma in the x axis and sum of all force equals ma in the y axis. So forces in the y cause an acceleration in the y. Forces in the x cause an acceleration in the x. Now we're going to have the same thing but in the centripetal direction. Sum of all forces in the centripetal direction causes an acceleration in the centripetal direction. And you might remember that AC equals V square over R. That comes from uniform circular motion. Okay? One quick rule here that you have to know, though, is that when you're writing the sum of all forces in the centripetal direction, uh, forces towards the center are positive, forces away from the center are negative, and tangential forces do not get listed. I'll show you what that means in just a second. Okay? So that's the convention that you have to use for centripetal forces. So let me show you three situations here. Uh, this is sort of a roller coaster loop. This car is going to be at the bottom. This car is in the top, on the top, but inside of the tracks, right? On the roller coaster, you're always uh, inside of the tracks. Um, and then here, the car is going to be at the rightmost point right there. Okay? So what I want to do real quick is show you the forces. So what are the forces here? I'm being pulled down by MG, and I'm pushing against the track, so the track pushes me back this way. Okay? Forces towards the center are positive, so normal is positive, mg is negative. Normal is not positive because it's up, it's positive because it's towards the center. Okay? Now let's look here. mg obviously is always down, which is positive, even though it's down because it's towards the center. And here you're pushing against the track this way, so the track pushes you down like this um, as well. So they're both positive. Okay? So if I were to write f equals ma here, sum of all forces equals ma, First of all, I would write sum of all forces centripetal because I'm going around a circle, equals MAC, and the forces here would be N minus MG. And then you would continue the problem. And the second one, sum of all forces centripetal equals MAC, would be N plus MG. Why? Because they're both positive. Here one's positive, the other one's negative. What about here? Well, MG is always pulling down. And normal is always perpendicular to the surface. Notice how in all of these, normal is going to be positive because it's the force that keeps you in a circle. If I were to write this, sum of all forces equals ma. See, I have normal as positive, and mg doesn't get listed. Why? Because you only list forces that are into the circle or directly away from the circle. If you're making a 90 degrees angle with that direction of towards or away from the circle, which mg does, you just don't get listed. So it's just normal equals mac, and we say that mg here is not a centripetal force. It's not going towards or away from the center, okay? So that's the idea there. Let's do a quick example here. So a small three kilograms object, so three kilogram, on top of a frictionless table, so here's a table, there's no friction on it, is attached to the end of a two meter string as shown. So this string here has a length of two meters. Now, you might remember this, if I spin on a string that has a length of 2 meters, that is the radius of my rotation, and that is the distance, right, that's the distance away from 
So L, little r, and big R are the same thing. L is the length of the rope. Um, R is the radius of the circle that it forms, and I'm at the edge of the radius, so that's my distance from the center. So basically, little r equals 2m. And it says here that it spins once every two seconds. Let's write that. So I can write spins once, so one spin or one cycle every two seconds. I can write it as a fraction like this. And then notice that the seconds is at the bottom. So this tells me that this is frequency. Frequency is 1 over 2, which tells me period is the inverse of that. Period is 2. And then I want to know the, the tension on the string. What is the tension on the string? So tension is a force. So I can write F equals MA to find tension. Okay. Now, just to be clear here, um, big T is already being used for period. So tension, I'm going to use FT. Okay. Force of tension. Let me just write it here. This is tension. And the way I'm going to do this is F equals MA. Sum of all forces equals MA. Now, when you look at this, this is a horizontal circle. So you might be tempted to write sum of all forces in the x-axis equals MA, but it's not. It's a circle. So the centripetal axis takes over the x-axis, takes precedence over the x-axis, and I write this as a centripetal F equals MA. The only force uh, in the direction of the center is tension. So tension is pulling you towards the middle at all times, and then you have sort of MG pulling you down, normal pulling you up. All these two, uh, these two forces just... All they do is cancel each other, and they're not in the centripetal direction, right? So your your normal for your tension is sort of this way towards the center, and your normal's up, and your mg's down. They make 90 degrees. They're not either directly towards the center or away. They don't count. So the only force here is tension, which will be positive because it's towards the center, and mass times acceleration. Now I have the mass. I don't have the acceleration right away, but what I can do is replace. Um, uh, I can go find the acceleration, basically. I'm not going to replace anything. I'm just going to go find it. So mass is 3, and the acceleration I need to get. So let me go off to the side here and find acceleration. Acceleration centripetal is V squared over R. And notice I don't have V, so I have to go get V as well. V is 2 pi R F or 2 pi R over T. All right? And if you do this, if you plug in the numbers, um, 2 pi R is 2 divided by 2. This is 6 point, 6.28 meters per second. And if you then plug this back into acceleration, you get 6.28 meters per second. Square all that. And you divide that by R, which is 2. And the answer is 19.7 meters per second squared. And that is what ends up going here. So my force of tension is just 3 times that. My force of tension is just, I have it here, 59.1 newtons. Okay? So I hope, I hope that makes sense. I hope you agree that it's pretty straightforward. I'm just writing, I'm looking for a force, I write F equals MA. In the process of doing that, AC has a special equation if you're are going around a circle, which is V squared over R. And whenever you're writing um, F equals MA in the centripetal direction, you should almost expect that you're going to have to rewrite your AC as V squared over R. That's what happens most of the time. Okay? Now, practice question number one here is related to example one, and it's, it's telling you that the tension... The string breaks if the tension exceeds 50. So this is kind of like saying force tension max is 50. Now, in physics, whenever a problem tells you the maximum tension is 50 or the minimum speed is 30, you just write tension equals 50 or V equals 30. You can almost ignore um, the fact that this is a maximum tension. You're basically, that's the number you're going to use, the maximum or the minimum whatever extreme number they give you, that's the one you're going to use. So here, tension maximum is 50, and I want to find the maximum speed. So basically, tension is 50, and I want to find what is V, okay? And you're going to use F equals MA to do this because I'm giving you a force. I'm giving you a force, so F equals MA, and... Um, it's in a circle, so F equals MA centripetal. So I want you to, I wanted to give you that, that clue, that hint. I want you guys to try solving this real quick. 
and let's see if you get it. 